Good afternoon, hardware fans, and welcome back to beautiful Denver, Colorado. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with John Furrier here for our four days of coverage of Supercomputing 2023. John, what's the coolest thing you've seen the last three days? Um, I think I love the GPU that NVIDIA has, that's pretty hot. I love the Ethernet conversations we're having, faster Ethernet. And I just like the whole cloud vibe coming in to the semiconductor boom, and just this whole smashing of the middle innovation area between semiconductors and cloud computing and the renaissance in the, of, the, of the data center. Um, on premise and edge is going to be exploited with net new use cases and AI is absolutely shining a light on it. And that's to me the coolest thing is the reality of AI is having an impact. Totally agree, we're kind of at the epicenter of the nerd Venn diagram of everything that's <laughs> cool. And I'm really excited to welcome our two next guests to the show from HPE. Joseph and Andrew, thank you so much for being here. Joseph, when we were just chatting, you said you've been to roughly 14 super Approximately, yes. Events yeah. casual, not that anyone's counting. Of course, of course. How is this show going for you? Fantastic, honestly, when you asked John what's the coolest thing he saw at Super I was surprised I wasn't on the list. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was last night. It's about to be the most <laughs> That was not at Supercomputer. Yeah, yeah that's that was right. So, but you know, that's that was the cloud. <laughs> this show is amazing this year. It's a, it's a great present. The, the feel, the people, the technologies, there's just so much great stuff happening at this show. So much positive energy. Andrew, would you agree from the lab side? Absolutely, I think John hit on just a lot of those you know, fantastic things that are all coming together and showcased here on the floor. Every year, it's just like, you, it's hard to imagine that much advancement has happened year over year. That's, that's the thing that always totally strikes me. I, I'm so glad that you said that. We were at Supercomputing together last year. Yeah. Conversation was much more focused on, on quantum, little bit, and obviously performance and cost optimization, always a hot topic. Uh, sustainability as well, but we are all things all AI, all chaos, and everyone's looking for the right partners and the right players Top 500, Green 500. Joseph, what are those titles? Yeah, it's, uh, we're very proud uh, to say, I'm, I'm just going to say it that we're very proud that. Own the, it. Yeah, the top five spots, like we have number one, number two, uh, and number five, you know, with uh, we, number one, number five are with our partner AMD, number two is with Intel, and on the top, uh, gr the Green 500, Four of the top five are HPE systems. Like, come on. Dust those shoulders on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. How is it that we're not the, I'm not the coolest, John. Oh, you guys are cool. <laughs> yeah. I say, we always love. We just hadn't had we, this conversation we, we, yet. Yeah, we're the <laughs> biggest cool. toggle the list That's after right, yeah. Well, the we thing, can do it in edit. The we thing, the thing yeah, about, we'll the thing about HPE, public. as I, I worked there nine years back in the heyday, you know, the, you know, I, Supercomputer started when I graduated in college in 1988, and I remember my early days at HP, uh, pre-HPE, it was all about the, the processors, okay? And then how can I get faster I.O., adapter cards? Now that it's, we're back to the systems mindset, you mentioned systems. The theme to me is, this is a systems mindset. The, the developers have to have it, um, the infrastructure platform engineering is emerging and changing, so how do you stand up AI stuff? Hardware, systems, clouds, edge. This is kind of the new architecture. Kind of the same game, but different stuff. But it's still the same stuff. Networking, storage, <laughs> servers, processors. What's the, what's the new picture look like? Yeah, I, th I think it's great observation. Yeah. And you know, with AI really being, like you say, the, the hot topic, if you will, uh, especially with you know, everything around generative AI this year, I think the thing that has really kind of resonated and hit everyone that how it has become a supercomputing problem. When, when you're doing AI at scale, and so I naturally, understand. you know, we, we think we're pretty good at that, just yep. like jo Joseph was mentioning. <laughs> so yeah, just a lot of those advancements at that system level all coming to bear, not only for traditional HPC, but as we further integrate, you know, AI and analytics as part of that, we're, you know, we're really seeing that convergence come together. And if we're, I can add. Please. Sorry, if I can add, I think um, a lot of the challenges that we've helped our customers address with supercomputing, some of the same concerns yeah. are starting to pop up now as they're looking at artificial intelligence. Yeah. The good news is, a lot of these aren't new challenges, some of them are, but a lot of them are yeah. not, and we, we know how yeah. to manage them at yeah. scale, and I think that's what really matters. You know, we've covered a lot yeah. of you guys for the years. You know, we've all, you guys were one of our early CUBE uh, events we've been to, early days. I remember covering the storage. Storage became, you had the three-part acquisition, then you got the servers continuing to be the servers, you always had great servers. 
But the thing now is with AI, it's like, okay, you got these models now that are going to, that are going to be the abstraction layer between the new interface. The new interface is going to look a lot more like what people want now, which is ChatGPT, OpenAI, yep. just shut down their new registrations, because after the developer day, there's so much right. demand and capacity. Yeah. That's a whole green conversation, but, the, they, that's the expectation of the user, that interface. So now you get large language models and foundational models in between that. So the question is, is like, how do you manage the data, right? So now right. it's like, okay, data management's upside down, but if you've got large language model, you want to have breadth, and to your hyper, uh, HPC problems here, problem statements, that there's also precision for personalization. Yep. So you have the, the large, broad swath of data, and then getting precision yeah. super fast, is what we're looking at with AI. That's kind of like the HPC meets AI problem. It, it absolutely is that convergence, and, and in fact, there's, a, there's an entire progression, if you will, on, on this journey for, well, okay, if, if I'm going to do something like a large language model, I have to produce that model, and right? And so there's a, a certain system, certain data management, certain development platform that goes along with doing that training, and then you have a, another phase that may be the personalized tuning, maybe it's langu language sp specific or geo specific, and then ultimately putting that model to use, the inference part uh, requires, right, it, it has its own system architecture and requirements. That's the great thing about HP as a company is that we're working across the breadth of that right. entire training, tuning, inference uh, progression. My, my favorite quote yesterday, Savan, I don't get their reaction here, is from these guys is that, yeah. well, on the Cube, the CEO of Grok, who's got the new yeah. uh, amazing LL, 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 LPU chip. They had a great llama okay. out there yesterday. The, la the llama's phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, wait, wait, the llama's also been a star of the show they, this week. Yes. No, no they're kidding. Gonna, they're going to get a swag award, but it's not actually swag, it's more of a marketing. <laughs> it was an someone going to win the llama? Yeah, yeah. 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 win the llama. <laughs> People were watching, there was an actual llama. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the C, so the CEO who, who invented TPUs from Google, yeah, yeah. on his 20% time, changed the game on, as we know, AlphaGo, that whole uh, project that they did. That, what he said to me on the queue here, he said, training's cost center. Inference is value extraction. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, on stage uh, at KubeCon last week, Tim Hawken, Google engineer, Cube alumni, said, inference is the new web app. Okay, so mm. digest that. What do you guys, what's your reaction to those statements? Do you mm. agree? If so, what's that look like in the future? What's that, what's that gonna, what's that, what does that turn into? Yeah, look, I think, I think the, the, the short answer is, if you look at how sophisticated the models are becoming, right. especially those foundation models, right, it, it's, it's costing more and more to produce those, right, you got to ingest more data because it makes the models better, right, that's where you get to a supercomputing class. Right you know, solution in order to do that training. But then it's all about, you know, like you said, the deployment side of things, and if you're spending all that money deploying that model, you want to be able to deploy it in, in as many environments as possible. You know, edge, you know, cloud, on-prem, you name it. It needs to be it. universal. That, that user experience is something that we've been talking exactly. about a lot. Yeah. Obviously something that matters a lot to you guys, and you've got a lot of different instances across verticals in which people are, are building and doing things. I'm curious, since you, you sit at the forefront and you get to talk to the coolest players, I mean, let's just be honest, about that. What are some of the, is there, are there any industries that you feel like are really pulling ahead or embracing AI and, and this increased processing better? Are there, like, what are the trends? Give us the trend report. Joseph, I see you. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll start, and Andrew, please yeah. chime in. Um, I don't know who's ahead or who's like really, but here's what I, I have seen. Oh, I think we're all still kind of like in a Mario I Kart race. I think we're still, still trying know. to figure out yeah. all yeah, of this. Yeah, there be a banana popping up out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. I haven't Bottle seen neck. that. Bottleneck but yes, banana. Yeah, right. There's a metaphor there somewhere. <laughs> we'll get there. But but I'll say like in the healthcare industry, um, happening at the edge, right? That's really important, right? There Very are much. emergency rooms. There are doctors that are working on looking at X-rays and all sorts of tests that need answers for patients right now. Mm -hmm. Don't have a week. Don't have a month to go send it all, get it all analyzed stuff. So having that right then and there, critical. Uh, manufacturers who compete with each other yeah. have to manufacture products that are high quality, that are meeting the needs of the customer base as fast as possible. So what I'm finding just generally is when it comes to industries, they're trying to get to the rightest answer as fast as possible. And that's not just to compete, 
but to serve patients and to, you know, for, for financial markets and things like that. So I think industry is looking at artificial intelligence less about a robotic thing that's in, back in a data center or, or a co-location center somewhere, but right. more of how can I serve my end customer faster, you know, solve a problem, get somebody healthier. That's what I'm seeing a whole lot of right now. The rightest questions. I'm going to use that term from now on. No, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I love that. I had that. to emphasize the right test yeah, answer. You had yes, the emphasis yeah. definitely on the right <laughs> syllable there. Andrew, <laughs> nice. what about you over there on the trend side? Yeah, look, I, I think the answer is we're just seeing it be, it's deployed across every vertical. There's, there's no yeah. one area that I would say is, you know, greatly stands out more, more than another. Uh, you know, I think, yeah, the healthcare, the finance, obviously the scientific community. Agreed. And, and what's happening there has, yeah. you know, a, a rich history in, in applying, you know, kind of the latest, uh, you know, kind of concepts and techniques. Uh, you know, I would say even some of our you know, systems on the top 500, you look at the amazing work that's been done on that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, General Electric on the, the the Frontier system that we deployed at Oak Ridge. Right. Uh, they had something, you know, here this week talking about the advancements in studying wind turbulence, for example. Right. And so, I mean, there's just many, many examples. I, I think that's the thing to take away is the, the application of AI, like that is, That'll be the next big story, even next year coming into this event, to see all those amazing breakthroughs that have so happened. So when Andrew are, and I are on stage next year with you guys, yep. we'll have this discussion. What has, I mean, just imagine a year from now. Yeah. I'm really excited just to think about yeah, it, Yeah, just honestly. think about that. Yeah. Think of all the yeah. advancement, the technology, but then applications in all these yeah. industries. What yeah. we're going to see people make amazing yeah. happen out of AI, it's going to yeah. be an amazing I think that's a great point. I think the innovation of these new, net new workloads are going to come out. You're going to see some low hanging fruit. I got some data laying around. Let's turn that into exhaust into gold. Classic big data, yep. cliche, that'll happen, check. And then, wow, I got other data opportunities either that are going to be generated and or I could focus on. So I think it's going to be what we don't see right. now. That's right. That's going to come back. Um, so I, I have to ask you, because you guys are kind of set up, as we talked about this last night uh, when we saw each other, GreenLake's been out for a while, okay? That's cloud-based, that's pre-hype, chat GPT kind of awakening around the world. How has that changed your game? Because one, the tech innovation is coming with AI, but also the education on the market side. That's right. How has that impacted the traction, Great the point, product, uh, and whatnot? Give us the update. Yeah, I'll say right, right now, I think there is a, an intelligence among the user base right now that says, okay, we understand what cloud can offer. I think three years ago when you and I talked about this, it was moving what you've got here and moving it somewhere else. And I think the market, all of us, realized that's not really what cloud is. Mm -hmm. We realize that you can have a cloud management model that's happening on the edge. We, we know you can have a cloud management model that's happening in your data center. We know we can have a cloud management model that's in co-location data centers. And we know we can have cloud management through the hyperscalers and the public cloud. Uh, what I have found with, with customers is they're having a deeper conversation, a longer investigation into what they do. Where is their data? What are they doing with it? How much access do they need it? How much, it, how much is it going to change over the next year? How much do they anticipate that change coming? And then they are figuring out where these things need to reside. So I, see, I feel like there is a strong intelligence that is emerging among yeah. our community. Yeah. And I'll say, just coming to supercomputing, there's a lot of yeah. users here. This is the conversation I'm, I'm hearing from yeah. them. This is a very smart, yeah audience that's here that's seeing the same things that we're it's seeing. It's not that you got lucky, because GreenLake was very thought, well thought out by Antonio, the vision. Yes. It was a company bet in, by HP. Early, yes. Okay, early, and it was a business model shift as well as technology. Okay, now fast forward a few years, okay, you're going to have essentially large scale change coming on the tech side, and productivity and personalization yep. come up as two hot areas, always on the queue. Better personalization, precision from a broad set of data, yes. but then also that other aspect of it, how do you get that, that, that focus and precision and personalization? Do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. so uh, it, it goes back a little bit to that model I, I started earlier around, you know, that tuning piece of it. So the idea, even in a cloud or hybrid model, is, you know, eventually there's going to be some layer of data that maybe you own, 
And you know, you need to do that fine level tuning and personalization with your own data. And so that's where the whole data management comes back into play as well as the, Pro the platforms that enable that. Productivity, your vision on productivity skyrocketing. Where are you seeing elements of it oh, now? Oh yeah. yeah. I think Great before yeah. that, I think you're going to see our markets, all these customers, healthcare, manufacturing, finance, yep. et cetera, they're all going to see the opportunity that artificial intelligence brings them, and then you're going to start seeing some major innovations, each of these Absolutely. industries where we're doing things better and different and faster. I think that's the innovation you're going to see first. Better, faster, stronger. I mean, it feels like it could be a Daft Punk song if we're not <laughs> careful it here. It might already be. Yeah, I, no, yeah. I, you know, maybe that's a great idea. We should talk to them that's about right. that. Let's talk about I that. Think yes, we should, yeah. I think we should definitely talk to them about that. Joseph, while we were chatting, you mentioned that you have a 15-year-old son, I Elijah, yes. who is a Rubik's Cube master, a yes. speed solver. <laughs> I look forward to having him on the show. Okay. Since you have a pulse check with the teens, What's the buzz like? I'm, I'm giving you that's a lot quite of credit. A stretch. Yeah, yeah that's, I don't know that I even have it. Inference, with my son, right? Isn't that yes. just an example that's of right. inference? Exactly. Not a hallucination. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's not, not a hallucination. hallucination. <laughs> it's just a little inference. Wow, we could really get the AI yeah, thoughts going. Yeah. What, what are are, are are teenagers talking about AI? What, what are your conversations like with your son and so, his friends? So I will say for both my kids, what I have found is they have learned to program in R and Python. And it's not a big deal, like I found out almost Casually, accidentally. Yeah. as one does. Because when I was in yeah. doing engineering school and we were doing C++ and Java, that's like, we would talk about it. Yeah, we just wrote this oh, Java yeah. program, et cetera. I like, accidentally stumbled into knowing that both my kids like know how to program in these things. And, and it's not, what's interesting is it's not like a tool to go get a job, it is, like with my daughter in college, she was like, I'm in a, statis a statistics class. And so I wrote this. This is so cool, like it's, I wrote it's this, second nature. Yeah, I wrote this yeah. R program to kind of help figure this out and I had to say, hold on, time out. You did what? You wrote an R program? She's like, yeah, no big deal. Wrote an R program. So I think Cash. it's an extension of what we just yeah. talked about. Yeah. Artificial intelligence is a way to actually solve these things and we are giving creative tools to this next generation yeah. to say this is the our tools. Yeah. Go build amazing. And I think we're yeah. starting Go to see build amazing. I love that. Go build amazing. Because that creative Go build amazing the creative creative class coming to tech is going to be oh, off the yeah. charts. Just solving problems, jumping in the barriers to get going versus setting things up. Right. What's the skill development? You get the first three shots out of the gate from AI that you could potentially reiterate and as it gets faster, with chips right. and systems. Yeah. And you know, I've got a couple of boys as well and they're college age and we have this conversation all the time about, because working in the labs environment, we're working on, hey, you know, kind of what's next <laughs> even. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Uh, we've got a great, science. it's an adapted quote from a colleague, one of our researchers, talks about, well, you know, uh, AI is not going to replace that scientist or that teacher or that publisher, but, the flip side of that, the teacher, scientist, teacher that uses AI right. will replace those that don't. So yeah. that's the thing, embrace yeah. it, that's use it. it, it's a tool, yeah. you know, let's that's not right. get too carried away. We had a quote on theCUBE a couple months Great ago that said AI scales intellect. Because yeah. you have data in your head Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So again, that's the creative plus what's available. And so we're going to get back down to the real time. So in this new model you got interface, model, foundation model, layer, and then infrastructure just self-forming. So is this going to be need? a whole new infrastructure system? Yeah. What we need this market to be, the customer said, is just to don't be so worried about what's, what's the tech. We're working on it. We're, yeah. we're doing that's amazing things. That's your job. We're, yeah, we're, we're doing some <laughs> great things. But think big on like how do we see more patients and how do we get them healthier faster? That's the problem, yeah. right? Yeah. How do we actually make sure that financial transactions are secure? Mm -hmm. Right? Those are the things we need. And, and I think we're now setting up a set of tools for these great minds to go and say, I see these big humanity problems and here's how we're going to go and solve them. And a great example of that, I'm going to plug our group just a little bit <laughs> on this. We'll uh, allow it. You've yeah, been nice, guys. Yes. So we'll, we'll allow a little yeah. getting, getting back to one of those areas where AI is going to make a difference, right? So we're working on uh, two projects in partnership with the Department of Energy, you know, related to applying AI on, you know, fusion related, right? So we know our generation, our yeah. kids' generation, right? Energy efficiency, yeah. sustainability is a huge topic. And so, you know, these are 
groundbreaking, right. you know, type, type work that we're involved in. Yeah. It is, and you can tell just how excited and passionate you both are. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. I can't wait for this to be the most watched segment from Supercomputing. <laughs> I think it will be. I have a feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling. And shout out to Elijah. I'm looking forward to him fixing my earrings. Yes. And that's I just want to give you guys. That's all he's going to fixate on when he watches. That's not solved. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. For, I'm sorry for those of us who are a little more OCD or, or worried about um, a balance in, in nature. <laughs> I also want to give you guys both a shout out. I'm not sure what the very loud noise is that's going on right now. Yeah, are we? But in you danger? have managed. I know, I've been wondering. <laughs> it sounds a bit like there's up. a fire yeah. alarm. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. There's always a lot of exciting stuff John going on seems on the very show floor. calm. So I, I was but, kind of feeding off. But of I him, just yeah. I, I like, here you are a lot. <laughs> dropping serious knowledge on the audience dealing with that. Hats off to you. Yep. John, always a pleasure to co-host yeah. with you. Yes. Naturally, that's when the beeping stops. Of course. And thank all of you for tuning in to this thrilling episode <laughs> of theCUBE here live in Denver, Colorado at Supercomputing 2023. I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.